Well, praise the Lord. Glory to God forevermore. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis. Amen. I'm reaching out on Facebook Live in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. I am led of the Holy Ghost to come on. Amen. For the next 30 to 40 minutes, hopefully a little less. Amen. To teach a word that's strongly on my spirit and on my soul today. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm not going to waste time. I'm getting ready to get into it. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome those of you that are logging in with me. Amen. I want to say hello to everybody. Glory to God. But I feel impressed of the Holy Ghost to come on and teach this lesson. Amen. And when I'm uh, sensing the Holy Ghost, I need to move with him. The Bible said they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen. I'm going to be teaching a lesson for the next um, 30 to 40 minutes, hopefully a little less. Amen. Uh, a message entitled Idolatry in the Soul. Amen. Idolatry in the Soul. Amen. We're going to identify idolatry in the soul. Amen. Because a lot of people, when they think about an idol, they think about something outwardly. They think about a statue or something that, some type of image. Amen. And a lot of people have images of Buddha and they see that as an idol. Some people have statues in their yard of the Virgin Mary and they have affections for those idols and they call that idolatry. And it is. But I want to identify idolatry in the soul. So that's what I'm talking about this evening, amen. So let me get into the message. Again, my subject is idolatry in the soul. Here's my text. I'm going to use uh, scriptures from Exodus 20, verse 3 through 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, 1 John chapter 5, verse 23. Let me start in Exodus. Glory to God. Exodus 20, verse 3, it says, Thou shall have no other gods before me. This is God's holy word. Exodus 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth Verse 5 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, next scripture in my text it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Here's what it states. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The last verse I want to use under my text is 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now, let me get into my introduction. In my text, I went to the Old Testament and quoted two of God's Ten Commandments. I also went to the New Testament to prove that the commandment that I'm about to teach on is still active today. Amen. It's still active. Glory to God. We can read it in the Old Testament, but it is still active today in the New Testament. Glory to God. Amen. And all 10 of God's holy commandments is still good today in the New Testament and under the grace covenant. Anyone trying to teach you that they are not is just simply lying to you and not really preaching the true Bible. Jesus' message was the 10 commandments, but what he did is he taught the tenor of the 10 commandments. The tenor mean a continual explanation of what God said. When you read Matthew chapter 5 and you look at the context, 
Jesus was dealing with the Ten Commandments, but the only thing he was doing is teaching the tenor of the Ten Commandments to those who would become new creatures. All the apostles taught the Ten Commandments. I do a lot of teaching along these lines because uh, down through the years, Satan has hated God's Ten Commandments. He has tried his best to blot them out. Amen. He has blotted them out of society in many cases. He has blotted them out of many courts, and even the Supreme Court has ruled against them in some cases. He, and he has almost blotted them out of the church, but we need to bring them back. So today, I'm teaching on one of those commandments, and the commandment that I'm teaching on is idolatry. Glory to God. And keep in mind, I went to the Old Testament and read how God feel about idolatry. Then I went to two scriptures from the New Testament to show you that God is still passionate against idolatry. And now today's subject is idolatry in the soul. Amen. That's what we want to identify. But before we get there, let me read a few more scriptures because I want to show you that these commandments are good today. And they're in the New Testament. Your whole Bible, glory to God, is made up of the Ten Commandments. Apostle Paul said in Hebrews chapter 5 that uh, when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, watch this, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. He's telling you the first thing we should be taught as newborn creatures in the New Testament is the oracles of God, which is the Ten Commandments. The whole Bible talks about them. So let me read just a few more scriptures, and then we're going to go to idolatry in the soul. Okay, 2 John chapter 1, look at uh, verse 6. It says, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Bible telling us this is love. People say I love God all the time. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then in another verse, he said, you keep my commandments even as I kept my father's commandments. Jesus saying I kept all 10 of the father's commandments. The Bible called Jesus in Malachi chapter 3 Amen. The messenger of the covenant. The covenant was the Ten Commandments, those oracles that came out of God's mouth. I don't know of any other book that God wrote other than the Ten Commandments. Glory to God. He allowed Moses and men of God to write all the other books. Amen. Holy men spake as they was moved by the Holy Ghost. But the Ten Commandments was wrote by God himself. And then when the Bible said the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, keep in mind what law came by Moses? It was called that Mosaic law. It is a fact that Moses delivered to the children of Israel God's Ten Commandments, but make no mistake about it. The Ten Commandments came by God. Amen. God is the one spoke those Ten Commandments. God is the one that wrote those Ten Commandments with his hands. So the Ten Commandments came by God. They was delivered by Moses. So the law that came by Moses was that Mosaic law and all the other 600 and some laws. He just delivered God's 10. So the 10 came by God. Amen. So I want to read that verse to you again. All these verses are in the New Testament because I want you to know that God's still serious about every commandment that came out of his mouth. And we're teaching on the commandment of idolatry today. Amen. And we're going to investigate idolatry in the soul. All right. Again, second uh, John chapter 1 verse 6, it says, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. Okay, let me skip down 1 John chapter 3 verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments, glory to God, dwelleth in him. You, If you're not keeping God's commandments, you're not dwelling in God. Simple as that. We need to focus in on these New Testament scriptures because not many people teaching on this anymore. We teach a lot of things in the church. Amen. But guess what? If we're going to teach and sound like the apostles, we're going to have to at some point teach these things because all the apostles taught them. Amen. Or, or Jesus taught them. Glory to God. They're all over the New Testament. And guess what? This is the new covenant because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 15 and 16, this is the covenant 
that I'm going to make with them after those days. I'm going to write my laws in their heart. Same laws he wrote on stones. He took away your stony heart when you was born again, and he wrote them in you when you received the Spirit. This is the new covenant. Now, when do we explain it this way? Because this is the way God has explained it. Let's read some more verses. Amen. Uh, I want to go back to this one. It says, 1 John 3, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that we abide in him by the spirit which he has given us. When he gave you his spirit, the spirit brought a consciousness of the laws of God. And the Bible said that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, that the righteousness of the law, that's talking about the law of God, not the law of Moses, might be fulfilled in us. Amen. That's the new covenant. Let's read another verse. Revelation 14, verse 12. Watch this. Here is the patience of the saints. The saints, glory to God. Here are they, watch this, that keep the commandments of God. If you got the faith of Jesus Christ, where is the commandments of God? Why don't we talk about this no more? It's all over your Bible. If we teach it and talking about everything in the Bible, but we never talk about this, we missing, amen, the forest by looking at a couple of trees. Glory to God. Let's keep reading. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 and 17. And I stay on this a lot because we got to bring this consciousness back to the church. Watch this. Jesus talking to this young rich ruler. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, a man want eternal life. You know, as well as I know, Jesus is not going to give this man bad information. Jesus has never told a lie. He cannot lie. And he's getting ready to answer this man. And the man said, What good things shall I do that I might have eternal life? Let's see what Jesus said. Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, watch this, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life or eternal life, because that's what the man asked for, watch what Jesus told him. Keep the commandments. Now, if you keep reading, he tell you what commandments he's talking about. God's Ten Commandments. He's not talking about the law of Moses. He's not talking about the law relative to the offering of bulls and goats. He's talking about God's Ten Holy Commandments, which is still in the New Testament. And the reason I'm going over these scriptures is because I'm going to teach one of those commandments today. And it's called idolatry. God still hate idolatry. There is no blood of Jesus ever wiped out God's commandments. The blood of Jesus empowered God's commandments. There is no grace that ever wiped out God's commandments. The grace of God empowers you to keep God's commandments. Hallelujah. Okay, so you see Jesus teaching the commandments in the gospel. And as I always say, the Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus told the apostles, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have taught you. Amen. Now, no one can say Jesus in Matthew's Mark, Luke, and John teaching is not for us today. Yes, yeah, for us today, because Jesus told the apostles to go everywhere in all the world, teaching them to observe all things I've taught you. So that just do away with that lie. Let's read another verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19. Apostle Paul, listen to what he said. He said, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. One translation said, the only thing that really matters is that we keep God's commandments. Now, that's what the apostle Paul said. So if you accuse Paul for not teaching the Ten Commandments, you haven't really looked closely at your New Testament. Now, let's move on. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. And I like to lay a good foundation anytime I'm about to teach on one of the commandments of God. I'm going to focus on idolatry as I get ready to close. But I want to give you these other scriptures to show that all the apostles taught the commandments. Yes, Jesus summed them all up by saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. But just because he summed them up, does not mean he did away with them because you can go to Romans chapter 13 and you'll find Paul teaching all 10 of them. You can go to Ephesians chapter 6 and you'll see Paul teaching and expounding on one of them. He said, 
Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. This is the first commandment with promise. So the apostle Paul taught all the commandments. He taught in Ephesians, let him that stole steal no more. All the apostles taught the commandments of God. Jesus taught them, and that's why I teach him. Glory to God. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. And hereby we do know we know him if we keep his commandments. You don't know God if you don't keep his commandments. People under this grace age and under the, uh, the cross said, now we don't have to keep them. That's nowhere in the Bible that is deception. The cross and the blood empowered you that you might keep them. The, the spirit of God, when it came to live in you, brought the consciousness of all 10 laws. And this is the righteousness of the law that can now be fulfilled in you according to Romans chapter 8. So the scripture says, and hereby we do know we know know him if we keep his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, you don't know him. That's what the scripture trying to tell you. Look at the next verse. Keep in mind that when I read this, I always like to say, I didn't write the Bible. I just preached the Bible. The Bible said, he that said, I know him and keep it not his commandments is a liar. You are lying to yourself. Glory to God. Church, you are lying to yourself. If you say we no longer have to keep God's Ten Commandments, you have been fooled. You have been tricked. Somebody have lied to you when it's all over your Bible. So it says, he that said, I know him and keep it not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Do you know what the truth is that he's talking about? The Ten Commandments. Whatever came out of God's mouth was truth. That was the original faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God, when he spoke those Ten Commandments, that was the original faith. Amen. And that was the truth that he spoke out of his mouth. Jesus said, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And he's originally talking about those Ten Commandments. Amen. Now, let's move on. And I'm in my message now, and we're going to talk a little bit about idolatry before I close. And I want to deal with idolatry in the soul. Just before I talk about idolatry in the soul, let me get you a little bit familiar with the soul. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says this, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, a whole, the whole thing. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Many of you already know this, but I trust that you, you, you refresh yourself in this, that the compartments of a man or a woman is spirit, soul, and body. No way you're going to get away from that. It's all through the Bible. The three ma major components is a, you have a body, amen, you are a soul, and you have a spirit. Now, some people say, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. That's really not accurate because the Bible teach that man became a living soul. You are a soul. You don't just have a soul. You are a soul. And somewhere in your soul, in, in, in the innermost being of your soul, there is hid a spirit. Glory to God. So your spirit, your soul, and your body. All right. Genesis 2 verse 7. The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man, the, the dirt man that's formed this body, formed man of the dust of the ground. This is the body, the body made from the dust or the dirt. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, watch this, breathed into his nostrils. Watch this again, the breath. He didn't say he breathed the Holy Ghost. He didn't say he breathed his spirit into him. Later on, man began to receive the spirit of God, but not here. He said he put breath into him and it was called the breath of life. So he said he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And watch this. Man became a living soul. Man is a soul. Don't let anyone fool you and say he's something that he's not. The Bible declares man is a soul. Let me keep moving because I want to deal with idolatry in the soul when I get to it. Now, Hebrews 4 verse 12, just to give you a little more information about the soul. Okay, Hebrews 4 verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful, meaning it's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, 
watch this closely, piercing, to, et, piercing even to the dividing asunder. Asunder, asunder mean to take down and part. Man is three major components, spirit, soul, and body. The Bible said the word of God is sharp and is sharp enough to divide asunder, take down in part that man's spirit, that man's soul, and that man's body. So the word of God is telling us there's a distinction between the three of them. Even though the man is a soul, you can still distinguish the soul from the spirit and the spirit from the body, spirit and soul from the body. This is what the word of God is saying. So it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two is, so it piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, which is in the body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So by this verse and many other verses, the scripture is telling us that the, that the soul and the spirit can be divided asunder. They are two different entities. It's two different things. Even though you're a soul, the Bible says you have a spirit. Amen. And the word of God and the spirit of God is the only thing that can show you the distinction of the two. Soul, spirit. Amen. All right. Let me keep reading. We're traveling. Come in. The soul is not the spirit and the spirit is not the soul. I'm going to say that one more time because I need to make this absolutely clear. The soul is not the spirit and the spirit is is not the soul. Now keep this in mind, and let me slow down because I want to make this clear, that the soul is spirit in that it, it's made from the wind or breath. Amen. So the soul is spirit in that sense, but there's also a spirit in the soul that is called the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20 verse 27 says the spirit of the man, or that's in the man, is the candle of the Lord. So he's telling you, he's showing you a distinction there. And in Corinthians, he says, what man, man, man is a soul, what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of the man that's in the man? He's showing you a distinction between soul and spirit, and he shows you the function of the spirit and the scripture going to show you the function of the soul. The soul is the person, but the spirit in the soul, amen, which is the candle of the Lord, search the soul, amen, is sometimes called conscience, amen. The conscience in that soul tells it when it's right and when it's wrong. That's the function of a man's spirit that's in the soul. Now, search the scriptures. It's set right there in your Bible, and the scripture says clearly that the the, uh, uh, according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the word of God is quick, amen, and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, amen, piercing even to the, the, T-H-E, dividing asunder, which means the soul and the spirit can be, be divided asunder, divided asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, Bible telling you, that the word of God, the spirit of God can divide the soul from the spirit, the spirit from the soul and the soul and spirit from the body. Glory to God. God's word has that power. And it's good for us to know this so that we can understand the function of a man's spirit, the function of a man's soul and the function of his body. And when God put them all together, one person. Glory to God. Let's keep reading. I'm trying to get through this because I want to get to idolatry in the soul. OK, hallelujah. Let's look at. Uh, a few verses here. Job 7 verse 7. Watch this. I'm going to try to explain the soul a little bit further. The soul. Amen. Watch this. Job 7 verse 7. Oh, remember my life, my life. The Bible said he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Breath of life caused the man to become a living soul. The Bible says in Job 7 verse 7. Oh, remember my life. It is when God took the wind and formed and fashioned a soul and a spirit and put it in that man when he blew it in him. Glory to God. It was a soul and a spirit made from an element called the wind. Some people call it air. Science call it oxygen. God took the wind, amen, and blew it in that man and made a soul and a spirit. So therefore, the soul can be called spirit, but make no mistake about it. You are still a soul and there's a function of your soul as a human. Amen. So remember my life. It is when my eyes shall 
No more see good. All right. Let's go to John chapter three, verse eight. The Bible says the wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canest not tell from whence it came. And whether it goeth, you know, we've heard the wind before it comes and goes. And sometimes you don't know whether it's coming or going, but you can feel it and see its effect. God is likening the born again experience to a wind, but it's a heavenly wind. The Bible said the Holy Ghost came from heaven on, on the day of Pentecost like a rushing mighty wind. So the Holy Ghost is called the wind, but it's the wind of heaven. He's the spirit of God. And the Bible teaches that if this spirit is going to be born again, it's got to be born by another wind. It's a divine wind called the Holy Ghost. So he said, the wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. Watch this. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. When you're born of the spirit, it is your spirit in you that's born again. And you have become a child of God. You have God's nature. Okay, let's keep traveling. I'm going to have to go through this because I'm trying to get to my main point. The body is called the outward man. Anytime you look in the scripture and you see the outward man, and I'm going to show you a scripture in a minute that state this. The outward man, he's talking about the physical frame that you can see, the body, the, the, the dirt body. Glory to God. Amen. So the whenever you see the outward man in the scripture, he's talking about the body. Whenever you see the inner man or the inward man, the scripture is describing the soul. Because the soul is the inward man. Amen. Or the inner man. Sometimes you'll see inner man. Sometimes you'll see inward man. He's talking about your soul. Whenever you see the hidden man, he is then talking about your spirit. Keep in mind three major components. Body, soul, spirit. So when you read in the scripture and you see the outward man, you're talking about the body. When you read in the scripture and you see the inner man or the inward man, you're talking about the soul. When you read in the scripture and you see the hidden man of the heart, the Bible tell you what it, what it is, a meek and quiet spirit. That is that spirit. That is that candle of the Lord that's hidden in that man's soul, many times called conscience. Glory to God. So it's the hidden man. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man, that's this body, that's, that's dying, amen, is decaying, glory to God. It said, though this, our outward man perish, yet the inward man, that's the soul, is renewed day by day. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind is a component of the inward man, which is called the soul. OK, so it says for uh, this cause, we faint not. But though our outward man, which is the body, perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That's the soul. Glory to God. Let's keep traveling. All right. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, but let it be the hidden man. Now the Bible revealing a hidden man. It said, talked about the inner man or the inward man. Now he's talking about a hidden man. Glory to God. This is no mistake that the scripture is revealing all of this. He's only talking about your body, soul, and spirit. Keep in mind your soul. Genesis 2, verse 7. God breathed in his nostrils, breath of life, man became a living soul, your soul. But I'm trying to show you the function, how everything functions. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The soul is hid in the heart. The heart is a component of the soul. But there's a spirit, which is called the candle of the Lord, that's hidden deep within that heart somewhere, supernaturally, called that man's spirit, or that man's candle. Glory to God. And the Bible said he lighted my candle. When you got born again, it was your spirit inside of you that was born again. And that's how you worship God. They that worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. Let's keep reading. It says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in which is not corruptible. The hidden man, the spirit is not corruptible. It says, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So the Bible telling you what this hidden man of the heart is. It's a meek and a quiet spirit. That's your spirit. Glory to God. Now, Psalms 51 verse 6. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts. 
Now, notice that word part, P-A-R-T-S, plural. He's talking about the soul and all its components. Now he's getting ready to describe another part that's hidden in that man's soul, which is singular part, P-A-R-T, which is that man's spirit. It says, Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, which is the soul and all its components. And in the hidden part, there's a hidden part amongst all of those parts, that's the man's spirit. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Glory to God. Now, the soul is you. Jesus taught on the soul. Mark 8, verse 34 through 36. Watch this. And when he had called the peoples unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, watch this, whosoever will come after me, let him, underline him, let him deny himself. The himself, you're going to find out who it is in the, when Jesus get through talking. The, the himself, amen, gonna, you're going to get some more clarity on who he's talking about, okay? Amen. And I know I'm going fast. I'm trying to get to my point. I'm trying to stay within my time, but I've got to, amen, make this plain. For whosoever will save his life, his life, notice he brew, brew in the man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What is my life? It's a soul. All right. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. He's talking about the himself. He's talking about whosoever. He's talking about his life. Amen. And he's going to explain to you who all it is, is in a minute. Amen. It says the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So Jesus was just calling the soul himself, his life, whosoever. That's you. That's the soul. God said, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You are a soul, period. In a story. Glory to God. Luke 9, verse 25. For what is man, uh, what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself? Same thing Jesus was saying in Mark chapter 8. He calling himself the soul. So your soul, glory to God. Now, let me give you some components of the soul before I go into the last few verses that I have for this evening. The soul is made up of the mind, the thoughts, your will, the, the person. The soul is the person. The soul is made up of your intentions, your, the, the intents of your heart, the reasoning within you, where you reason and where you decide. That's the soul. We're talking about soul. We're not talking about the spirit, the candle of the Lord that's hidden in them. That's a whole nother function. And we're not teaching on that. Now I'm talking about the soul. The soul house the intentions. The soul house the imagination. The imagination functions in the soul of a person. Amen. All your movements, that's the soul. The reasoning, that's the soul. The memory, that's the soul. The person who decides, who's doing all the decisions, making all the decisions in your life, that's the soul. Glory to God. Amen. The feelings, your emotions, your affections, that's the soul. Man is a soul. Now that I've established that, I want to read some verses, and these are going to be the last verses for this evening. Colossians 3, starting at verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Watch this. Set your affections on things above. The affections is housed in your soul. It's in your soul. Glory to God. So the Bible said, set your soul on things above. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. For you are dead. And your life is hid. Your life, which is a soul, is hid, amen, uh, with Christ in God. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, now Christ is our life now, but our life, which is a soul, is hid in Christ. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. Now watch this verse closely. Modify, put the death, amen, uh, extinguish, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, discontinue it, modify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, 
uncleanliness, inordinate affection, your affection that's out of order, evil concupiscence, covetousness. Now watch this, which is idolatry. These affections, these attachments in the soul is also called idolatry. Many people think about idolatry as statutes, like I said in the beginning. And that is true because the Bible said don't make any graven images. But what many people have failed to realize is that many people have made images in their soul. And many people have attached their souls, their emotions, their affections to different things in the earth. And those things have literally become idolatry. Now, let me read the commandment again. Glory to God. This commandment is still good. Satan don't want you to think that these commandments still apply in the New Testament, but they do. Glory to God. God in the Old Testament said, Thou shall have no other God before me. In the New Testament, God is still adamant about you not having anything before him. You not making any graven images. In verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Notice that word image because I'm going to end right there with image. Any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. What? Idol, idols or idolatry. Now I just showed you that man is a soul. Glory to God. Man was made a living soul. And if you're not careful, you can have idols in your soul. And many times we try to get a breakthrough. We try to come to God. We try to get in a relationship with God. But there's so many idols that are hidden in human souls. And until we identify these idols, God, amen, will be distanced from you. Amen. And God has commanded for you, us to not have any idols, outward or inward. Glory to God. Amen. Now, it says, modify these members upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, it's inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. These things can become idolatry. Then it says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Now, in my closing, listen to this clo uh, closely because this is the point that I want to make. The commandment says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Don't let nobody fool you as if in the New Testament this commandment don't exist. God still hate idolatry. God still hate idols. Glory to God. So he said, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Amen. What a better way to make an image other than the soul where the imagination is housed. Many people have imagined things and they have imagined it so long and have extended their thoughts so far. They have wrapped their affections around things and those things has become idols. It could be a man. Your affections can be so into a man. Your affections can be so into a woman. Your affection can be so into lust for uh, 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 the wealth of this world or uh, the lust for the certain type of house. Nothing wrong with homes. Nothing wrong with uh, uh, the things of this earth. But the Bible says set your affections on things above. Why? Because when you set your affections, your feelings or your life or your soul above, Amen. Then God allow you to distribute the affections in the earth properly. But if you set your affections in the earth, the Bible teaches us that wherever your affection go, Satan will for sure go there to try to construct an idol in your soul called how you feel, your emotions, how you feel about people, how you feel about things. Amen. Anger can become an idol. Uh, hatred can become an idol. Many Christians sit in church Sunday after Sunday. They have all of these emotions and some of them, they just uncontrollable. They have such strong passions for different things in the earth. Some things are, are, are sinful. Some things start out good, but then they wind up sinful and they be turned into idolatry. 
We're talking about idolatry in the soul. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know how a stronghold is constructed? A thought come. It's not your thought, but it come. If you don't cast it down and, and uh, refuse to meditate upon it, it's not your thought. You can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop birds from building a nest in your head or on your head. So when a thought come and you receive that thought and you begin to meditate on that thought, you begin to extend that thought and that thought drop in your heart and now you're imagining on that and now you have a strong desire for what you thought and what you extended your thought to go to. Amen. And now you're imagining those things that become an idol. And a lot of people got idols in their souls. And that's why many people prayers are not heard. And I'm trying to help you today to tear down the idols in the soul. So the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It became a stronghold because it became an imagination and that imagination became an idol. And the commandment says thou shalt not construct any image. And many times Satan has tricked us so much that we have these images in our soul and these images has become idols. Glory to God. So it says, casting down imagination. If that imagination is unholy, you have to cast it down. Because the commandments say, thou shall not make unto thee any graven image. You can make images in the soul. And if those images are unhealthy and unholy, it is your idolatry. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. So this message is so important because we have to be able to distinguish idolatry when we see it from out from inward idolatry from outward idolatry. A lot of people got idolatry in their souls and don't even know it. Watch how you feel from day to day. Control your feeling. Cast down thoughts and high things that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When something exalts itself against the knowledge of God, it has become an idol. Amen. So we're talking about idolatry in the soul. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness of mind to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this exhortation today. I don't know how long I've been going, but I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that you'll destroy every idol in your soul. Some peoples have made their leaders their idols. You love your leader so much that you can't call sin, sin when you see it. Amen. So many chicken preachers in this world today that cannot stand up to someone that you know is unrighteous. That's your idol. Your preacher has become your idol. Your church has become your idol. Your religion has become your idol. Your emotions has become your idol. I call you to repentance today in love, to tear down the idols, because the Bible says in uh, Exodus, thou shalt have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or likeness, and thou shalt not bow thyself down to worship them. Thyself is the soul. God love you. Amen. And what do it profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? God bless you. Until the next time, this is Apostle Curtis Lewis saying, we love you. We thank God for you. And remember, someone cares for you. His name is Jesus. God bless.